guys, what's up? It's Minitoff, and today I'm going to show you what I record and edit with on my videos. And I'll do a quick little tutorial series on actually starting off when you edit with ScreenFlow. That is the application I use to record and edit all my videos. So if you jump down into the description of this video, the first link will be palestream.net. That is the creators of ScreenFlow. You can buy it here if you want to, or you can try the free trial. And if you had the older version of ScreenFlow, ScreenFlow 2, you can upgrade for 30 bucks. Now it is $99 and there are ways of getting it free and I don't support that. So do whatever you want, whatever, and it's up to you. So as you can tell right now, I'm not using ScreenFlow. This is not what it looks like. This is QuickTime Player because I can't actually show you what it looks like to record while I'm recording. It's just a little weird. But anyway, I have ScreenFlow down in my dock and I named it the original because I had the older one. And uh, right now, you can choose the audio input you want. And because I have Soundflower installed, this doesn't come up, but I can record from my built-in eyesight or I can record from my blue snowball. And you can also choose to record computer audio. Now normally, if you check this box, you'll need to download a plugin. And just go ahead and follow that. And then I can record from my eyesight, but I'm not in a, any position to look into the eyesight because I, it's just really dark in my room. So if I go ahead and click record, It'll start recording and it will do a nice little countdown. Three, two, one. Hey guys, what's up? And so right now you can see I'm recording with ScreenFlow and it tells you how long I've been recording for. And you have a few options. You can pause, which will, the second you pause and the second you resume, it will look like nothing happened. You, will, you won't even know the time difference. So that's that. And you can configure recording is what we just did. So it keeps telling me how much time I've been recording for. That's good. I'm going to go into, so stop record. This is how I do it. Or you can actually press shift command 2 to stop the recording, but I'm going to do it this way. That's how I always do it. And it comes up with this little nice fancy editing window. And I love the editing in ScreenFlow. That is probably the best reason you could, you should get this product because I'm recording with QuickTime Player, which is free, but you cannot edit with it. So. Now I'm going to cut back into using ScreenFlow because I love using it, so I will be right back after I'm done. Alright, so I'm back and now I'm using ScreenFlow to record this so it will be much easier for me to edit this video because I just I love editing with ScreenFlow and you're going to see why. This video is just going to be covering the basics of everything and I'm not by any means a professional editor so don't, you know, feel free to experiment with your own stuff. But here is the recording that we just took and the second you resume it will look like nothing happened. So this is my recording. And you can see the audio is on top. And normally how editing works is whatever's on top shows up. So if I put this on top, then it would essentially you know show that instead of this. But this is audio, so it does not matter what it is. I can put it below it. It will not change what the video itself looks like. So what that means is audio can be on top. That's what it always is. And right here, because I recorded the actual computer audio, it comes pre you know linked to it and everything comes linked up so you don't have to worry about linking the two together like if you record with audacity because you like the sound quality better you can you have to find where you were talking and link up the video with the audio which is kind of confusing but as you can see right here there is an audio line and the reason there's nothing on that is because while I was recording this no sound was coming out of my computer like I wasn't playing a game but if I was playing Minecraft you could see all the little you know walking sound effects and stuff so if you want to just completely delete this so you don't have to render it and stuff like that, you can right click on it and you get a few options here. Um, you can split the clip, which is essentially how you cut videos, which I wish there was an easier way to do that. But besides dragging this thing, you can drag this, which will cut everything, or you can drag it backwards. Then that's the only way to cut a video. So let me, Command Z will undo. That's very, very helpful. So I'm going to right click, detach audio. So what this does is it completely unlinks the audio from the video. So I can just delete this because there's no point in having audio that's not showing up. So before we get more in depth into editing, we're going to go into our user preferences. So screen flow, preferences. And you're going to go into general and we're going to mess with some of these things. So right here is show screen flow options in the menu bar keep that that's just when you click on this you will see the options and right here you can change the countdown if you don't even want a countdown I like the countdown I'll change it to three because I really never use it that much 
and you can launch the Screenflow helper at login, open last document at startup, which could be helpful, but I really don't like that that much, and check for updates at launch. So then you can go into the timeline, and I honestly, I don't really like this. It's a different type of timeline. Just don't mess with that. And you can show the current time when scrubbing. That's very helpful. So for instance, when I do this, if you see right above my mouse, it tells me what time in the video I'm at. So if we go back here, and you can, this is usually, I think, bar swipe. And I will get into all these transitions later. But change it to cross dissolve. It looks much better. It's just a simple fade in and fade out. If you're going for a different thing, this is just the default. Like, if I put add starting transition, it will be a cross dissolve. And the track height, regular, medium, or large, what that does is, I can't really show you, but the distance from here to here, it will just shrink that down, which doesn't affect the actual video, but it will affect your viewing. And I just like it at regular. And under advanced, nothing really here and you can uninstall the audio driver that you installed to listen to the computer audio itself so jumping back in here I'm gonna show some of the um, all the key features that you need and in later videos I'll go way more in depth into this but just for now it's gonna be very simple so right clicking on an item you can see the properties that you can actually do to it and double clicking you can change the speed so this is how I fast forward my videos so like say I want from here to here to be fast forwarded so I go to where I want split the clip go to the other spot spit the clip now normally um, I would cut out the audio too so you can do the same the audio and you can obviously oops you can obviously highlight what you want so say I want to be here and I highlight both split the clip it will cut both undo so Say I want to speed this part up, but you don't want to hear me talking really high-pitched. So I'm going to double-click, and you can change the speed. And you can obviously ha see how much it decreases it, or you can make it longer. So I usually go at 200%. That just seems like the sweet spot. And we'll speed this one up to 200% too. Get it right there. And if you want to listen to what I sound like, go ahead. Keep telling me how much time I've been recording for. That's good. I'm going to go into... So stop recording. So... That's not very ideal. So you can just completely delete that, and you'll hear absolutely nothing. And, you know, that's kind of the basics of fast-forwarding. So let's just Command-Z until we get back to normal, because, say, I don't like that. Let's go back and right-click on this. You can lock the clip, which will not allow you to move this clip at all. It's completely... I'm clicking on it. I can't move it at all. I'm going to unlock this so I can move it. Um, track selection, I don't really know what this does. I've never used it before. Show clip inspector is basically double clicking on it. You can lock it from there too. And a thing that I use all the time is add starting transition and add ending transition. If I play the video from the beginning, you'll see it, there's just nothing there. But if I add a video transition, remember we set the default to cross dissolve, you'll see there's a nice slow fade in. And if I zoom in, Right here is the zoom, zoom out and zoom way in. This doesn't affect the video, it just affects your viewing. So I can drag this way out hey and guys, it will give me up, a man? very so slow right fade in. And you can have it you know, be right here for like an instant fade in. So there's a lot of options that you can do. Now if you right click on the actual transition itself, the transition, you can see all the different types of transitions on your video. So if this, you do the bar swiped, which is the one that's default, which hey is pretty guys. cool, but I don't know. I don't really like it too much. I like cross dissolve. It's just the most professional looking. And you can obviously, you know, try playing around with these because they're all pretty cool. I will admit. So anyway, let's zoom back out because I like to have a little view and I'll put this back to cross dissolve hiccups. Um, so we've already covered the zoom. So right here, this just allows you to change how much angle you want to see for your timeline so I obviously would like to have this as much you know viewing angle as you can but you can't really change that this is changing the actual video so if I click on one of the clips let me go back into the clip if I click on one you can see it selected so I can move this around and if I click on this it's the audio nothing comes up so if we go back to here say I wanna you just wanna zoom in you wanna have the whole video zoomed in well, you can just, you know, I'm scrolling right now. And this is what, this is how you zoom in. 
but obviously that's not very ideal so you can drag it from the corners also to resize and you can fast forward and stuff like that so up here you have your little I don't even know what these things are called your little tabs I guess so you have video properties audio properties screen recording properties call out properties animation annotation properties text properties and media in your document so if you want to add more media you can just click add media which means more videos or pictures or stuff and this is actually the very the screen recording that I took at the very beginning so I can you know add this and I can put it in front so that's how I add my intros I just go add media I have everything then I have uh, YouTube stuff let me find it YouTube stuff intros actual intros and then I, I have my intros here I have them named so I can just drag it in pull it down here and then move it over to the beginning and then move this back and that's how I add my intros to my yeah. videos so I'm not gonna really cover this in this video I'm just gonna do you know simple tutorials on each one of these properties and we'll go more in depth on each one of these so every video I might cover one or two of these properties depending on how long it takes the first three are the first the first two and this one will probably take the longest so I hope you like this tutorial and I hope you like the ones to come and you know I, I'm gonna put a lot of work into these videos so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys later